Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here today. It's great to see you all and be in this space with you. Welcome to Reconnect and Recharge in the New Year, the first session in our 2022 Teaching Artists Tuesday series. My name is Kinsey Keck. I use she, her pronouns. I am a white cisgendered woman. I have brown um, shoulder length hair. It's up in a half ponytail today. I'm wearing some large metal framed glasses and I'm sitting in my kitchen with my Texas uh, cheese board hanging on the wall behind me and a couple of art prints as well. And I'm also the programming and membership manager for the New York City Arts and Education Roundtable. The Roundtable is a grassroots service organization that works to improve and advance the state of arts education through professional development workshops, advocacy, and online resources, and platforms to connect the arts education field. Although we are currently meeting via Zoom, the Roundtable would like to acknowledge that we work and live on unceded lands. Manhattan, or the place that is widely known as New York City, exists on the contemporary and ancestral homelands of the Canarsi, Lenape, Munsi, and Wappinger people. These sovereign nations and communities are still thriving here and we continue to occupy their lands. We would like to give a moment of respect to them as well as to the black and immigrant communities which have helped build the city that we know today. As we recognize that all of our pasts, presents, and futures are intertwined, we would like to uplift a couple of contemporary indigenous arts organizations that the Roundtable um, has learned from and that we encourage you to support and learn from. The first being the Lenape Center. Um, the Lenape Center hosts workshops and programs, performances, um, ceremonies, and they're a really excellently, excellent resource for anybody who's looking to learn a little bit more about where they're living. And um, I would also put this in the chat, the Red, Heart, Red Hawk Native American Arts Council is another great resource. It's a nonprofit organization made up of representatives from multiple different indigenous identities. They also offer a lot of programming um, around many artistic disciplines and um, their goal is to educate the public about indigenous heritage. So please take some time, learn about these organizations and others in your area, and please not only learn from them, but support them. All right, thank you. So we're just gonna move on to a few reminders and then get going. Uh, if you have any trouble with Zoom at all throughout this meeting, please send me a private message, I'm here to help. Please remember to keep your mic setting on mute unless you're the person speaking. Uh, I do wanna note that this workshop is gonna be interactive. So we invite you to be on camera uh, and participating and present with us throughout. But if you aren't able to join us on camera during the workshop, that is perfectly acceptable and fine. Do what you need to do to be here. We do encourage you to use the chat box to ask questions, share resources, and connect with everyone on the call. And those resources and the chat box transcript will be saved and shared out to you in an email in the next week or two. I also wanna note that we have closed captioning on this call. Um, to activate that, please click live transcript. It's on the bottom of your toolbar and select show subtitles. And finally, I want to note that this workshop is being recorded. The recording will be edited and uploaded to the Roundtable's YouTube channel and also on our website. And you will receive a link to that when it is uploaded and ready for you to view. And that is it for me. Um, it is my sincere pleasure to introduce to you Melissa Friedman, who is the co-artistic director of Epic Theater Ensemble and your fantastic facilitator today. Welcome, Melissa. Thank you so much, Kinsey. I'm so excited to be here. Hi, all. Hello. Uh, so uh, here we are in early 2022, recharging, reconnecting. I am excited to lead this workshop with you. As Kinsey mentioned, it's really helpful to know who's able and willing to be on camera because several of the exercises that I'm going to be leading with you really depend on that. For those of you who cannot, as Kinsey said, that's okay. That's totally all right. Um, at a certain point, <clears throat> I'm going to um, make that setting where you can only see the hide non-video participants. So, uh, so I will see only the people who are on camera and then I'll expand my vision again, just so you know. Um, great. Thank you so much for those of you who are able to do that. <sighs> all right. So here we are. I am not here to tell you how to 
reconnect and recharge. Um, but I am going to offer the ways in which I am actively engaging in that process myself and things that have worked for me as I've faced, as many of you have, if not all of us, the most challenging time in the history of all time. Uh, so uh, it is uniquely challenging this fall, yes? Uh, with these new and changing landscapes and the shifting ground that we're facing, I found myself being somewhat flexible last year and, and grappling with the Zoom time, but this hybrid time where we're live, but we're on Zoom and we're in school and we're not in school has really posed a lot of challenges and my work in the classroom has really challenged me quite a bit this fall. And I found some new ways of rejuvenating that I wanted to, I really was looking forward to, to sharing with you. Um, there's a few questions I wanna ask you in order to best serve you. Uh, and so if you wouldn't mind in the chat, just sharing uh, your artistic discipline in terms of your teaching artistry and years of experience roughly. So new teaching artist teaching theater or uh, been teaching for 25 years dance, you know, what have you. So um, if you wouldn't mind in the chat, just give a little sense of experience and um, discipline. It might be as specific as you want, playwriting. Um, great. Thank you, Rudy. Thank you, Ivan. Great. Fantastic. Wonderful. I see some new teaching artists in the mix as well as some, I see like a nice variety of experience and discipline, fantastic. And now my question for you is, um, can you distill down to a few words um, what brought you to teaching artist work? What uh, started the journey for you? Um, why, why did you decide to become a teaching artist, either if you're a new one or back when you began? A few words, just a few words. Nice, recruited, <laughs> I love that. Several of the teaching artists who work for me at Epic would say the same, like they were told, why don't you try this? I'm like, what, what is this thing? Just the idea of learning new stuff, the need for restorative justice, right? Love what you do and you wanna share it. Great, I love that, same recruited. You wanna see young people growing in the art. Didn't want the skills to be lost, love this. Love learning and teaching back. Um, I think it's interesting to think about the beginning of the journey and that for some of you may be happening right now, but um, you know, I've been a teaching artist. The first time I was a teaching artist was in 1990. Uh, so that's a little over 30 years. And I um, was recruited and sort of had a lot of nervousness about it. I was very young and recruited into it and discovered my love kind of as I was doing it, the, the love of being a teaching artist versus like having a, a calling to, to do it, um, to deepen my knowledge. This is connected to maybe perhaps of what brought you in. I wanna think about a core value, which is, something that is guiding you, that is core and central to your work as a teaching artist, um, that is deeply personally meaningful to you. So I wanna share, before you share your core value, I wanna share something that I've been struggling with, which is that when I started the work, especially with Epic 20 years ago, we're in our 21st season, this year, I'm one of the co-founders of Epic Theater Ensemble. And when, when we started, I, I was really influenced by a talk that I saw uh, at a conference, actually. Uh, Liz Lerman, for those of you who are familiar with Liz Lerman, um, talked about uh, how nurture and rigor weren't mutually exclusive. And that really, that way of thinking really impacted me 
and drove a lot of the choices I made in curriculum and in teaching and inspired me to think that I could bring both rigor and love in the room and then they could live together and that I didn't have to choose. I'm really challenged by that this fall. I'm really, really challenged because for me in the classroom, in the live space, students, teachers are being told to reduce expectations on a daily basis. And it is a bit um, challenging for me to see that constantly being asked to lower the expectations of what I could bring in and what I can accomplish with students, understandably because of attendance, because of social distance, because of all sorts of things that we are challenged by. So I was essentially hitting my head against a brick wall for about six, six weeks this fall, because this way I've been working for 20 years, every, every bit of my core values for 20 years has been about that dialectic between nurture and rigor. And I was really, really asked to release the rigor. And uh, with a mask, they couldn't see my face in this way. And I felt like I wasn't as nurturing as I'd been. And I wasn't able to establish those relationships. So my nurture and rigor has really been challenged. It's real for me. So I had to ignite a new part of my core values. And I have a lot of them. We all do <laughs> a lot of core values, right? And I just had to kind of open up and think about what are the other core values that I can lead with that are real and true and deeply meaningful to me. And I have done that work. And the last bit of few, the last few weeks of being in the live space before forced quarantine for myself, um, I really, really connected to the students in a different way and connected to myself and have recharged. And so what I'm asking you to do is to brainstorm as many core values in the chat that mean something to you as possible. Start with the ones that maybe are your go-to and see what else, all right? And it might relate to your art form. So if your art form is visual art, it may connect or not, but what are the things that guide the choices you make in the room? Great, I love that. Imagination, joy, play, fun. You can list them together or you can put one in and then put another one in and then put another one in. Um, and these are ones that really give you life as well as their students, right? The ones that you're like, gosh, you know, if I do nothing else, I wanna bring imagination in that room. I wanna bring honesty in that room and kindness, right? Love it, Taylor, that's fantastic. Yes, expression, voice, vulnerability as strength. Oh, vulnerability as strength, yes. I love that. That's a core one for me as well. Oh my goodness. I uh, think outside the box. Yeah. Whole lessons, whole residencies can be built out of that core value, right? Just thinking outside the box. Um, expansion, authenticity, beautiful. I would love for you now to look at this chat as it's rolling in and write into the chat a core value that you didn't yourself write, but you see and sort of like affirm it by writing it again. You know what I'm saying? So if you love like vulnerability as strength, um, as I am going to do, I'm going to put that in the chat. So it's like you're, you're doubling down on some resilience, story, ownership. We have a mission statement from Ivan. That's beautiful. Okay. Silliness. Yes. I'm going to write silliness. Um, so, um, okay. So there, there's a lot of core values to pull from that, um, that we can use to guide the work that can nourish us, to give us, to give us um, strength and resilience and all the things that we're asking. We want to bring to our students. We have to bring to ourselves, you know, the whole, the air the airplane thing, you know, I'm not gonna say that again. You all know the thing you have to get the, you know. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Megan. Um, so um, 
here we go. Uh, so we're gonna now we're gonna shift to on your feet, but we're going to at the culmination of these participatory exercises, we're gonna draw on these core values. So we're gonna dip back into these core values. So I wanted them to be there for you in the chat to to pull from because you're gonna have to pull from them pretty quickly. Okay. So now we're going to shift. Anyone else who wants to be on camera, please be on camera at this time. And you're gonna shift from if you can, if it's possible for you to stand. Uh, that's great. If not, if you are unable to stand, that's okay. Flexibility, we gotta be flexible. I'm gonna lead from a core value that I have not named. It's not nurture and rigor, I'll tell you that. Um, but it's something else. I wanna lead with a particular couple of core values in these next couple of uh, exercises and you'll see if you can think of like what you think it might be. Um, Great, so you're going to find that standing position. And so I'm, I'm, I've am I'm, got my pile of books, just like the old days of 2020, 2021. Um, you know what I'm saying? I've got my pile of books, I'm placing it on there. All right, great. I'm going to, at this time, I'm going to hide non-video participants. Does everyone know how to do that in the video settings? you click on hide non-video participants. I think this is great for every single person to do for this exercise. Yeah, so you should only see people who are on camera. So right now I've got, there are 20 of us on camera. Sky is a box right now, even though I don't know why that is. Hmm. All right, so there are 19 of us on camera, okay? Is everyone seeing that? Thumbs up. Oh, nope, a few more than that. Did I get the numbers wrong? Yeah, it's like 40, yeah, something like that. Okay, great. And uh, all right, so we're gonna stand, we're gonna do something called exploring the frame um, to begin with as, a, as our warm up. So what I would like for you to do is place your head at the center of the frame to begin with. And that might mean moving a little bit further away. It may, might mean adjusting where your uh, camera is. Okay, so you're gonna just start with your head center of frame. And if you're able to make adjustments according to what you're able to do physically, um, place your feet about shoulder length apart and your hands by your side, and again, Make those adjustments. If I was in the same space with you, I would be able to offer suggestions with, to you, um, but you're gonna need to have that uh, autonomy of being able to make those adjustments right now. And hands by your side. And you can place your shoulders by your ears. And you're gonna release on a voiced sigh like this. <sighs> Ready? You're gonna do it again. <sighs> Yeah, and one more time. Ha! <sighs> and we're gonna do a little shoulder roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna do back and forward. Good. Nice, yes. And you're gonna reach up and you're gonna stretch out a little bit, just a little stretch before we explore the frame. Oh my gosh, I'm cracking a lot. I hope you didn't hear that. Or if you did, you did. That's what it is. Um, great. All right. So now we're going to do something called explore the frame. So I'd like you to place your face, as I said, center frame. And you're going to now place your chin, let your chin drop to the bottom of your frame. Okay. And you're going to roll your chin along the bottom of the frame. And you're gonna let that inform what the rest of your body is doing. You can have a little fun with it. So I'm gonna do like a deep plie with that. No, oh, and you're gonna really imagine that your chin is actually scraping the bottom of something. Mm -hmm. Yes, great, okay. And then you're gonna pop it center, okay. I'm still in that plie because somehow I've, I've adjusted slightly. Um, and now you're going to pop your the top of your head to the top of your frame. So you're gonna be on like releve, you're gonna be tippy toes, right? And you're gonna bump that head onto the top of the frame along the top. Oh, great. 
Great. Good. All the way to the side. Okay. And now you're going to scrape the side of your face down the side of the frame and then up again and then down and then up. Now all the way to the other side, up and down, up and down. And now you're going to explore around the world. See if you can scrape your chin around the bottom and then the side and then all the way back. Now you're going to explore close. Close. Closer. And then as far as you can be, as small as you can be, all the way, maybe all the way at the side, yes. Now it's close. And back to the center of the frame. Great. Fantastic. Now, uh, we've explored the frame a bit. Um, I would love for you to um, now, we're going to do something called follow the follower. So everyone is in neutral. And all at the same time, we are going to move together without following any one individual. We're going to make the magical leap that we are all capable of moving in perfect synchronicity together as an ensemble in this Zoom, all right? So we're not following one person, we're following everybody. And many of you have played this game in the real space, in the, in the live space, what do we call it? Um, uh, but we're gonna do the same thing, which is there is follow the follower. There is no leader, we are following the follower. Starting with neutral, your hands by your side, your face in the center of the frame, okay? And we're gonna just follow the follower. For those of you just watching or off camera, make observations and we'll ask you questions about what you saw after. All right, great, and come back to neutral. Fantastic. All right, cool. Um, now, I wanna ask everyone in this ensemble to choose somebody and pin them. If, does everyone know how to do that? You hover your cursor over one box and you'll see three dots appear in the right hand, upper right-hand corner Click on it and click on pin. I am going to not be one of those people because I'm gonna observe. So don't pin me, pin somebody else. Everyone got it? <laughs> okay. Why, why should we pin? What was that? Why do we pin? You'll see. Okay. Just trust. Okay, so um, so pin somebody, anyone who's on camera who isn't me. Okay, so that one person now should appear and uh, you are going to now, uh, you are going to now follow that one person. They don't know you've pinned them, right? And you're gonna follow them, okay? And you're gonna try to match exactly what they're doing. All right, everyone's starting in neutral. And begin. 
And if the person you're watching isn't doing anything, see if you can just magnify whatever it is they're doing by 5%. Just give it a little bit more something. Just add a little bit more of what they're doing. Great. So those of you who are just watching, start to notice the ways in which there starts to be some uniform movement. Not entirely. We're starting to see reactions across the board, yes. Yes, me too. Yes. Wonderful. Now everyone exaggerate just by 5% what you see, just a, even a little bit more. Magnify it a little bit, yes. <laughs> now magnify it by 50% and Together, find a way to bring it back to neutral. Beautiful, all right. In the chat, you can just say who you pinned, just for fun. Philomena is very popular. Great, um, <laughs> fantastic, love it. Taylor, 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 okay, um, great. Uh, what was it like watching the pinning, watching that. For those of you who were not on camera, you can write something in the chat about that. Or some people were saying, I'm smiling so much. It was really fun to watch. So fun, right? Um, this is an exercise we've done so much at Epic. We have endless amounts of fun with it. Um, and we'll talk for after, after we have, do this final exercise a little bit, we'll break out, break down the warm ups a little bit, but I just wanna, Yes, composition, yeah, yeah. Mm. All right, but before we talk about it too much, I wanna do one last exercise in our sequence and that is passing the core value. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna ask, um, can I ask Julio to start us off? Is that cool, Julio? Um, and I'll tell you what to do. Julio is going to um, embody a uh, core value that he cares about, okay? You're gonna embody that core value and you're gonna imagine it's coming from your center and you're gonna take that and you're going to choose someone who is on camera. For example, let's say it's Taylor, okay? And you're gonna say, <laughs> hi Taylor. <laughs> um, you're gonna say, um, you're going to say your car value and you're going to pass it to Taylor. Taylor will receive that core value and thank you for it. Once you've received your thank you, you go off camera. And Taylor will transform his core value into the one that's guiding that he'd like to guide him into the work. And he's going to name, he's going to name the person he's handing it to. So you know who's receiving it and hand it off into the camera. They will receive it and say thank you. Here's how you remember if you're confused. You must name the person you're handing it off to before you begin. Otherwise, they don't know they're receiving it because you're not able to make eye contact like in the, in the live forum where we can make eye contact with someone and they know we're coming at them. So the first thing you do is name the person you're handing it off to. Then you wanna name the thing and embody it and hand it off to them and that's through the camera. When that person receives it, they receive it from the camera. Everyone try that, just like handing something off to the camera. Okay, and then receiving it and saying, thank you for creativity. Thank you for kindness, whatever it is. And then once you've handed it off and received your thank you, you can turn your camera off. Okay, make sense? It should be one word, just one thing. And we wanna have it be somewhat, you know, like passing off, like a, like a, uh, energy around the circle kind of speed, right? So if everyone can take in what their core value is now, and on the count of three, you're going to say what that is. So you're prepared, you know, you don't have to think of it when it comes to you. Ready? You're going to think of it now. What is the core value that's leading you? On the count of three, you're just going to say it out loud. You're all on mute, so we won't hear you yet. One, two, three, go ahead, say it. Yeah. Okay. So you're ready. 
All right. So Julio, if you're ready to start us off by naming somebody in the in one of these uh, boxes, and you're going to pass off your core value to them. And I will be the last one to receive. Okay. 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 Great. Uh, Megan. And go ahead and, and name the thing. Oh, empathy. Spot on. And what I hope to put out is love. And I want to give that to Thank you. 130983. Am I reading that right? So you're gonna go ahead and Megan and only choose someone who's on camera. Oh wait, she is on camera. You're on camera. Or, so is that your name? Yes, they're on camera. Nine eight nine. Yes. Okay, great. Fantastic. I didn't even see that. Great. It's fine. I'm passing on love. And if they don't accept, I would love to give to. Oh no, no. I think they accept. They accept. Yes. Oh yes. Yes. And go ahead and take your mic, put your mic on. When your name is called, that's when you want to put your mic on, right? There I am. I received that and I'm passing to Anne Passion. Thank you. <laughs> I would greatly accept Passion and I will pass it to... Um, <laughs> Uh, Ivan uh, Joy. I, if you've gone, make sure to go off camera so we can see. Okay. I accept it and I give appreciation to Johari. And I receive appreciation and I give resilience to Lila. Thank you, Jahari. Is that how you say your beautiful name? I'm going to hold this close to my heart and I could use this right now. I thank you so much. My, I have to pick now who um, and pass it over. Well, I was trying to pick Ingrid and I was picked Anne, but somebody already picked Anne. So can you give it back to the person that gave it to you? <laughs> no, no, you pick someone new. Okay. All right, let's look in. I'm picking Cecilia. And I am passing you determination. Hmm. Thank you, Lila. Determination. I am taking justice and passing it to Clement. Thank you, Passion. I will, uh, Carly, I will give you belonging. Thank you for belonging. Um, and sorry. Uh, Sky, I will give you wonder. Thank you, Carly, for this wonder. I'm going to turn it into a connection and pass it on to Oksana. Oksana, can I give you a slight adjustment? Now, when you receive this, can you um, allow the core value to have some vibrancy and movement and life and take on the shape of whatever that core value is as you pass it along? Oh, well, great. I try. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and I'm going to pass it on uh, to, hold on, I'm going to see uh, Anuparma Anam. Anu, Anam. <laughs> um, creativity. Thank you so much, Oksana. I'd like to pass on peer support to Beata. Can you say again what you gave me? Uh, peer support. Peer support. Thank you so much for peer support. And I'm going to give you give inner peace, inner peace to... Let's see why I give this to 
I'm gonna give inner peace to carry. Inner peace to carry. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Bianca. Take that inner peace. Uh, and I'm going to transform it into a little silliness. And I'm gonna pass this silliness to T. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Carrie, for that silliness. And I am going to take that and transform it into ownership. And I would like to send this ownership to Sarah. Yes. <laughs> I will take this ownership and change it into ease. And pass mm. it to Katie. Mm. Thank you for the peace. I will take this peace and slightly transform it into an inner vulnerability, which feels similar, but also more open. So my vulnerability, I would like to give to Philomena. Philomena, my vulnerability. I accept this vulnerability that also feels like openness and I'm transforming it and sending it to Jill. I'm giving you bravery. Mm. Thank you for that bravery, Philomena. You were awesome when you were doing all your movements. So you were very brave and thank you for that. I will take my perspective and send it to Katie. Individual perspective. I think only um, Catherine and Jessica have it on now, yeah? Oh, okay. Sarah. Oh. Let me see. Oh, okay. Well, then I will send my... Oh. We good? Right. Yeah. Should I do it? Okay, I'm going to do it to Catherine. <laughs> I'll send your own personal perspective to Catherine. Thank you. I need some perspective. Um, I am, yeah, I'll take that and then it becomes fun. <laughs> I'll send that to you, <laughs> Jessica. Thank you for the fun. And I'm going to take it and make it silly, get the syllabus going, silly, 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 to Lisa. I accept your silliness. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. All right. Everyone can come back on camera who's comfortable doing so at this time. Give yourself a round of applause. Yes. All right. Um, that was really wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing those. Um, and I would just love to take, before we shift into the next part of this workshop, for the remainder of the workshop, we're gonna be working in breakout rooms and then coming back. But before we do, I just wanna break down um, the, the warm ups that we led. And did you get a sense? I had a kind of a guiding couple of words that were guiding my warm up choices and the ways in which I led the warm up. Did you did you get a sense of what those might have been? What what did you read from that? If you can write that in the chat. I love vibes. Did you say vibes? Yes. Yeah. These are all words that I I definitely are are words that I I love and are part of my core values. Um, mm -hmm. So for me, I think it was a combination of community ensemble and uh, playfulness, right? One of the things that was a breakthrough for me when I was having a real <laughs> crisis for lack of a better word um, in this, this fall of feeling like hitting my head against the wall 
was really saying, you know, what can I, what can I do to give myself energy in the room? And I think uh, really bringing in a playfulness and, and, a, and an opportunity for the students to connect with each other and to me and, and play together became the most important thing. You know, not losing sight of rigor or love or those things that I value so much, but placing something else front and center for myself so that I could feel successful at the end of the day so that I could get nourished by the work like I have been for 30 years and suddenly was feeling like I was coming up dry um, because these pathways were getting blocked off. There were just roadblocks on my, on my journey in a way that I had never seen. So um, yeah, and embodiment too. I mean, for me, playfulness and embodiment are, are hand in hand. So finding those ways to, to coax playfulness to not start with the demand for it, not to expect everyone willing to be playful at the beginning, but just giving permission for it and modeling it and, and giving room and space for it. Other thoughts about um, the warm up or anything that you wanna add and you can get on mic. I mean, it's a little tricky with this number of people, of course, but if you want to get on mic, you can talk about it as well. Anything in the, in the um, warm-ups that you observed or that you have a question about? I know they're very Zoom-based warm-ups, which isn't necessarily always applicable. God knows what's coming, but um, in, the, in the live space. Yes, love, love that. Um, I, saw, I saw the word joy, joy a lot. Joy is definitely a word that I'm trying to, play center as much as possible. <laughs> it's my middle name actually. Um, and uh, so I'm trying to reown that again. Um, any, any thoughts or questions or observations about the warmups? Was it, okay, I have a question for you. Was it more enjoyable to pin or for those of you who did the exercise or to watch um, versus to feel out everybody and which was more freeing, more playful, the one where you pin somebody or the one where you were just taking in the full ensemble. I'm always curious about that. I personally am a more in-person kind of person. Yeah. Um, this whole format, is a little bit awkward for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like to see people. I like to experience what they're experiencing and I'd like to enjoy that in person yeah so for me I guess I enjoy the experience of everyone experiencing it however mm -hmm. they're experiencing it right um, so the more like everybody I'm with you Megan like I that's one of the things that I think we have to go we have to say when we're working in the in the yeah. space, we have to go, all right, well, I can't go to Zoom expecting the experience that I get when I'm in live. So what can I expect? What can exactly. I say? I can be playful in this space. Of course. I be, but I can't get the things that I also require from on, that I only get in the live experience. But I definitely I'm feel sorry. awkward in the space, but I, hear that. I also I hear that. try to like give myself to the best of my ability in the space and just emote the way that I emote and let's see what happens. <laughs> That's so funny. I love this idea. Sorry, I just saw Ivan going like, I, I, I kind of unexpectedly felt sad that no one pinned me. Um, oh, and, uh, I know, I, I love that. So funny. I and know this one, I kind of felt like a creeper, um, which is so funny. Um, for some people, it's really freeing. And I can, I, I love, this is just sort of a side note for warm up games is having variation on warm up games, which is something I'm fascinated with, will bring out some something in one student and bring out, and if you do a var variation, you bring out something else in another. So I will often ask students, you know, especially students I've worked with before, um, what did, which one worked for you and why? Why do you think that is? And then it will identify something that maybe they need to work on or, or address or look at. Like I felt more- I understand that's helpful, but like, I don't understand like the whole pinning of things. Yeah. I don't understand, I, I don't know, like making somebody yeah. a priority or not in like this kind of conversation. Like I just, I'm there when I'm there. Yeah. In, in real in, life, you know, in, like- <laughs> Totally. Pinning is a reference to, to um, a very, 
uh, listen, I'm not going to try to say that I'm teaching Ann Bogart. Okay. No, please teach other, me. <laughs> but, but, but it is a variation of the, you know, choosing one person to follow in the viewpoints work. Right. And so one of the things that I wanted to think about in my, in my core value in terms of playfulness is thinking about how do I translate this in the virtual space. So yeah. when you're going back into the live space, pinning someone is just choosing to direct your focus to that one person and really um, mirroring what they do. And of course, in the live space, you can also have an awareness of the whole, which you can't quite have when you're pinning. But um, I love this. Um, thank you for those responses here. Um, and I'm sorry for any of the technical challenges that can come with this space. Um, at this time, I would like to um, go into breakout rooms uh, that, that Kinsey is uh, setting up or has set up. And in those breakout rooms, I would like for you to do the following. It's gonna be rooms of four or five, and you're gonna do the following. You're gonna introduce yourselves and share the core value or values that, you're, that you think you wanna lead with starting in your next time in the classroom. Um, and you're gonna together brainstorm uh, a warm up exercise or exercises that you think could embody some or even all of the core values. Have you played the one where, um, and it may be if you're going across artistic disciplines that it's an opportunity for you to learn like how would your core value translate to a teaching artist uh, warm up that is a more visual art based warm up. And I want you to share and talk about connecting your core value to the work, okay? And then time permitting, you're gonna get a little reminder from us. If you can sort of practice one and say like, well, what would this exercise look like? How would we do that if we led from that? If you get to that third, that's great. Um, but the most important are the first two of identifying your core values and coming up with an exercise or exercises that might um, lend themselves, might be easily led by those core values. And it's a chance for you to meet and talk to someone maybe that you haven't met or talked to before. That's the other aspect and to network and connect with each other, okay? In breakout rooms of four to five. Kinsey, are you ready to, to roll out those breakout rooms? Yes, indeed, we are ready. Um, okay. If you have any needs while you're in there, I'll be here in the main space. You can always come back to the main room if you need me and look out for any messages from us. They'll, be, um, they'll pop up at the top of your screen in a little blue bar. And that's gonna do it. I'm gonna open them now and you will be transported automatically. Here we go. Great. I'd love to hear if you have a representative who can speak and it distill down something from what you chatted about in your breakout room um, and, uh, and just share maybe something about the core value or a warm up exercise that you have a new thought about that could embody those values. So let's just hear, um, you know, a brief recount from our from our breakout session. I see a lot of nodding from Jill. Um, uh, talk, to talk to our leader, Ivan. Ivan. You made me a leader, oh my God. Um, <laughs> okay, we, just, we had Jessica, we had Jill. What's this guy, what's this guy? Is he hiding again? And Jay. <laughs> and Jay, right, where's Jay? Hey, it's Jay. How you doing, Jay? Um, and we talked about all our core values of what we do. I guess we, we do a little bit different. Um, uh, we have different age groups. We talked about the age groups we love, mm. which are, um, like for me with seniors, I really, really love them. Mm. But uh, I, we came up with um, a, what do you call it? A, I want, to, what do I want to say icebreaker or like a little project that, that we can do. So I thought, so why don't we do, um, have the kids, since it's visual, have them, draw themselves as, as if they were born on another planet so they can just draw a whole new body. And then you can use, uh, since Jay uses words and poetry, they can also tell us what their language sounds like, um, mm -hmm. the sounds they make, um, whether they use eyes or noses or any other senses, um, that kind of stuff. And we can, and Jessica suggested they could act out what that means, you know, and they could do that. So there's a whole, whole, you know, kitten caboodle about it. I love that. And can you share that's such a beautiful starting idea where can you share what uh, core values inspired that activity? I think uh, creativity um, uh, and please jump in. 
<laughs> and help me with that. Creep TV inclusion that they all get the same pro project um, and empowerment. And basically, basically empowerment because uh, it enables them to do think think kind of out of the box and kind of like really think in a full way, like a three D way. And um, play, so they can play. They can. Yeah, that's yeah, fun. It's really, for it. but really could be creative and kind of own their own creation, you know, which is nice. I'm really moved by this idea. I don't know if anyone else is feeling emotional about it. I just I think it's beautiful. Um, we got a million of them. <laughs> some of you go off and do this exercise. It's beautiful. Um, fantastic. Thank you for sharing. Another uh, breakout session group wants to share something about Ooh. the exercise they thought of and, and the core values that connect. Yes, Julio? Yes. Yes. Um, so I was elected a leader of our group. Um, I, I had Susan, Katie, and Lisa, and we had quite the variety of performing artists, um, the teaching artists, um, of, between dance, theater, and performance, and poetry. So we connected our core values to what's called the great wind blows, when the great wind blows, um, nice. where one person um leaves well everyone leaves the video except one person the person who starts and that person has to present a a, a binary question or statement i um turn on your camera if you like or if you agree or, or and everyone who turns on their camera is safe except for the person who doesn't turn on their camera they are the next in line to present a statement or question for everyone else to turn on their their uh, cameras to, um, mm. and then we have we also stated that one stipulation is that the teacher or the teaching artist is the the moderator who who helps select the next person in case there wasn't any option. It's wonderful. And can you talk about the core values that led you to that? Indeed. So the um, core values that that connected this idea was connection, vulnerability, um, participation, and empathy. So with, with the option of, of a statement or question, uh, one can seek out the empathy that it would gather, um, as well as the participation and connection, whereas the vulnerability is, the, is tied to the participation, um, whether you agree or not agree, or, or like or not like. I love it. Um, because I'm looking at time, for, can the other uh, breakout room leaders write their response in the chat? The exercise, the uh, core values, just like a little tiny little two sentence summary. Um, and uh, so we can sort of see how it's bubbling out. The most important part of course is that connection you made within your own breakout session and how you work together to connect those core values with the work, I would love to propose to you all that as we struggle with burnout and the, all of the obstacles that we face and a challenge to our own resilience, to reconnect any decisions you make to a core value that is meaningful to you and that you believe is meaningful to the students that you serve is gonna help. It, it certainly has for me. And I hope that this workshop in some way reminds us of this that if you're hitting your head against the wall because the core value you're leading with, like I've been, um, isn't serving you at this time that we're in, that's okay. And it's gonna be there for you when you need it again. But rather than continue to hit your head against the wall, see if you can reach into one of the other core, core values that you hold dear and let that lead the way, right? So, um, that's okay if you didn't have a chance to develop an exercise. Um, I love this. Wonderful. Um, what I would love to do, because I'm passing this back to Kinsey in just about 30 seconds to wrap up in the final moments, um, I would love for you all just to take a deep breath in and out and in out and now you're going to breathe in a word that you feel like in some way embodies the work for yourself today 
You're gonna breathe that word in, and on the exhale, you're gonna say that word. Breathe. Yes. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, I really, really appreciate how willing and vulnerable and open and connected everyone was able to get during this hour and 15 minute workshop. I really, really appreciate you and your time. And I'm gonna hand this back over to Kinsey. Thank you, Melissa, so much for this workshop tonight. I have to say, I know that a lot of people in the community, including myself, have felt such Zoom fatigue. And I think we heard a lot about that tonight. And I did not feel any of that this evening. And I'm so grateful that I was here. And I hope you all are too, because the energy in this space like was really palpable and, and special and um, joyful. So I want to thank you for helping create that and all of you who are here with us that helped create that as well. Um, I want to say one more time that everything that you're writing in the chat right now will be saved. I'm going to make a transcript and I will send it to you all in an email um, in the next week or so. Um, there is going to be a, uh, a survey that pops up in your browser after you close out of this meeting. If you have two minutes to fill it out, that would be lovely. I'm going to put the link here as well. I'll also include that in the meeting. Uh, I'm sorry, in the email after the meeting, if you don't have time for it now, but we just, um, we really value the feedback from our community. We read every single word and it really, um, is important to the planning that we do in the future. So if you have a moment, I would love to hear what you have to say. And I also invite you all to please join us for our next session next week, The Art of Building Relationships During COVID-19 and After. That is going to be hosted by Jennifer Mack and Taylor Valentine, who was here this evening. So if you haven't registered for that yet, there is a link to do that. And I really hope that we see you there. Um, and that's about it. Have a lovely evening. Thank you all so much. <laughs>